Hi, my name is Pete Rumford, and I'm going to take you through a core stability series. The core needs to be uh, able to transfer force from upper extremities to lower extremities. It needs to be able to withstand significant tension and pressure in order to stabilize the spine. So the series I take you through today is going to be built around building that tensional integrity in various planes. And in subsequent videos, we'll talk about how and when the core and the spine need to move effectively and efficiently. But all the exercises we go through in the next 10 to 15 minutes will be built around stability of the core. So start lying on your back and bring your knees up towards your chest. Make sure your head's supported at first, but you're gonna tuck your chin and raise your head off of the surface. If you need to, you can keep your head down. Hands come onto the fronts of the thighs, toes come up towards you. Start pushing into your legs, not straight away, not straight up, somewhere in between with about 30 to 40% force. Keep that head lifted and chin tucked. We call this exercise push. When we talk about the core, we're not talking about just the transverse abdominis. We're talking about the entire cylinder of the trunk, every muscle working in unison. And what we're doing with this exercise is activating and turning on all of the muscles of the trunk in this plane. After about 30 seconds, you're gonna to go to what we call cross at a 45 degree angle out in either direction, left hand on the inside of the right leg, right hand on the inside of the left leg, not pushing straight out, but away and out, still keeping a little bit of traction up towards the ceiling, chin tucked, head lifted as much as you can, toes pulled up towards you the entire time. About 30 seconds here for the cross position. Then hands come over the tops, head can relax down, toes can point away. Try to pull the knees towards your chest. Now you're resisting with the back side. I mean, you shouldn't feel this in your front core so much, but you should feel a light contraction at the top of the glutes and the lower back. We call this pull. We're activating the multifidi with this exercise. After about 30 seconds of the pull exercise, we'll go back to and finish with 30 seconds of the push again. So maintain this position, trying to pull the knees towards the chest, then pull the toes back up, tuck your chin, lift your head, back to the push for 30 more seconds. Again, this is an activation exercise to feel how your body automatically responds to a demand while connecting the upper and the lower body. Chin tucked, head lifted, neck engaged as much as you can. Again, if there's any pain with that, you can rest the head down, but keep the chin tucked and engaged. Don't be extending the head up over the head. Very good. Now hug your knees in towards your chest. Kind of shake it out a little bit. Now we're gonna take that automatic contraction and work on maintaining that stability while we isolate motion to the hips. So lift your head and tuck your chin again. Start pushing into your thighs. Feel that automatic contraction. Keep that automatic contraction as you stop pushing and rest your hands on your hips. Now maintain the stability of the core from the pelvis to the shoulders. Head can be up or down and I want you to isolate motion to the hips. In this case, we're isolating motion just to the hip, trying to keep the knee at about a 90 degree angle. If you're doing this right, your back should feel flat and neutral throughout the exercise. If you're doing it wrong, as you lower one leg, you'll feel yourself get pulled towards that direction, arching your back and getting heavier onto that side of your pelvis. Do your best to maintain stability for the minute as we isolate this motion to the hip. This is about building strength and endurance of the core. So we're gonna do this for a minute, and after a minute, we'll transition into a longer lever version of this exercise. And that'll be two straight minutes of what we call bracing, which is maintaining tension through the core volitionally, whereas the first exercise we did was an automatic core engagement based on our pushing into our knees. So now transition into a longer lever motion, a leg press motion. And you can push out as far as, well, I want you to push out as far as you can, but you can push as low as you can towards the ground. The lower you get, the more leverage there is, the more difficult it is to not arch or rotate your spine. If you can't do this without arching or rotating your spine, go back to the first variation. If you couldn't do the first variation, I'll show you when we're done with this, 
a variation that you can regress to and work your way up. But again, we're going for a minute, working on the strength and endurance of that stability of the trunk. If you push into your stomach here, you should feel firmness. With your hands on your pelvis, you shouldn't feel any movement of the pelvis, just isolated motion to the ball and socket joint of the hip. Very good. Hug the knees in, shake the back out. If any of those were difficult for you, you can do the same thing with your feet on the ground, engaging your trunk, fire with one leg, keep the tension, and work on that marching position, but with one foot resting on the ground instead of having both knees up towards your chest. All right, now, let's go into a multi-directional plank series here. We're gonna start in a side plank position. Start on your left side and lift your body. And if you can, lift that top leg. If it's too much to lift that top leg, then you don't need to. With your foot, try not to be in a rolled ankle position, but be in a position where you're engaging the outer border of the foot into the ground. Easier in shoes, but more functional in bare feet. So both legs are totally straight, both quads are engaged. Head and neck is in neutral, not falling off and you're maintaining this side plank position for 30 seconds. You'll get eight seconds to rest and switch positions. I'll keep facing you before doing the other side. After eight seconds, we're up and we're up. This is a great um, series to identify asymmetries side to side. Maybe very easy for you to lift one leg, very difficult for you to lift the other. Again, if you can't lift the leg, you can do the side plank here. If you needed to, you could go down to your knees as well. Do what works best for you. 30 seconds on work time, eight seconds to transition. We'll have three other or two other positions. A front plank will be next. Prepare yourself and then we're gonna go into the front plank and lift one leg for 30 seconds. Up, chin tucked, Lift one leg. As that leg lifts, don't let your pelvis shift. Stay in complete stable position, holding this front plank. Don't let your shoulders sag. Stay engaged, holding this position. So the last plank was working lateral stability. Now we're working on the ability of the front of your body to withstand tension. It's not worth debating whether planks are, planks are functional or not, but they build tension intentional tolerance through various planes and that is a good thing. A little eight second break. Plank back up, chin tucked, shoulders engaged, lift the left leg without rotating the pelvis. Now we're challenging stability through the right side. Again if you needed to you would just do two front planks with both feet on the ground. Working towards being able to do these asymmetrical planks for 30 seconds each. Holding the position, feeling the challenge. This is based on the Bunky test, which is a test I use to measure symmetry of core tolerance through my clients. Eight second rest, inside leg plank. Dig the top toes in, inner part of the foot, lift the bottom knee. Arms are straight from bottom arm to top arm, across the body. Head in neutral in alignment with the spine. Don't let that lower leg sag. If you can help it, keep it up. Make sure that bottom knee is locked out and straight to protect your knee. If you're feeling any strain on the inner knee, lower the bottom leg, take some pressure off of it. Otherwise, just let it feel good. Eight seconds to switch positions. En engage the inner border of the right foot now. Left arm under you, plank up. Lift the bottom knee. Top leg totally straight, bottom knee lifted and engaged. Maintaining this position, building strength through the inner line of the thigh and into the groin. Good shoulder workout as well. 30 seconds, six total positions. Very good. Now lie on your back. Let's do a 
bridge unloading series to keep working on stability of the pelvis and the core. Start by bridging up and down with two legs. Make sure that as you bridge and bring the pelvis into a straight line between the shoulders and the knees, that it's your glutes doing the activity. Try to disengage the hamstrings as much as you can. Then maintain the top of the bridge. Engage the right foot down. You can have you, if you can, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. If you need more stability, you can have hands down next to you. Just don't let your shoulders tip forward or elbows. Okay, before you lift one leg, push the opposite foot down and bridge up with one leg. Hold for five to 10 seconds. Lower down. Fully engage that left foot now. Bring the right one up. Hold for five to 10 seconds. Lower down. Fully engage the right. Notice my pelvis is not lifting, or sorry, my pelvis is not dropping on the side that's lifting. You must have stability through the leg that's gonna stay down in order to more effectively unload the opposite leg. Again, arms can support you if they need to. Lower the right, fully engage the right. Lift the left. Keep the chin relatively tucked. Lower the left, fully engage. Unload the right. Lower the right, fully engage. Lift the left. Lower the left, fully engage, lift the right. Let's go one more each side. Lower the right, fully engage, lift the left. Lower the left, fully engage, lift the right. Very good, lower that down again, hug the knees in. Just kind of shake it out a little bit. Very good. Now, let's come into a hands and knees position. And I want the hands under the shoulders, spiral your elbow creases forward, drop your shoulders down your back so they're not up towards your ears. Spread your fingers as wide as you can, equal weight through as many of your fingers as you can. Dig your toes under you and lift your knees up. Head and neck in neutral, maintaining stability in this position doing a bare hold. We're gonna hold this for about 30 seconds. My timing may not be perfect here. But try to keep the knees so they're only about an inch or two off the ground. Now step your feet back. They can be a little bit wider than hip width. Bring your hands together. Okay. Again, shoulders down, head and neck in a good position. Fully engage your left hand and your right foot into the ground so that you can disengage the right hand and tap the left shoulder without any shift in your body. Then fully engage the right hand and left foot to tap the left. And I want you to alternate, feel that diagonal engagement to stabilize and notice that my pelvis is not rotating with every lift. I'm fully engaging in order to disengage, or fully engaging one side in order to disengage the other side. And relax down. Feet together, knees out, head down, hands together, elbows out. Okay, prop up and forward. And what I'd like you to try to do is Fully engage the left arm and the whole right lower leg from knee to foot. Head and neck in a solid position, shoulders engaged and stable. Fully engage left arm, right leg, and lift right arm, left leg. And hold for about 10 seconds. Then lower and lift five to 10 times. Good. 
Okay. Sit back, short little break. Come forward. This time, right arm, left leg fully engaged. Okay. Shoulders up, head and neck tucked. Try to lift left arm, right leg. Ten seconds, and then ten lifts. Isolating as much as you can to the shoulder and the hip. Okay, easier variation. I like to give the easier variations. Second, hands and knees position. One leg straight, your typical bird dog motion. A lot easier. Feels like a good cool down after what we just did. Here. Okay, now. Prop up. Toes and hands once more. Fully engage left hand and right foot. And I want you to crawl forward and back with the right side 10 times. Notice my pelvis and back position staying neutral. A lot of effort through right leg, left arm. And then pause in the middle, full engage right arm, left leg, Whoop. <laughs> forward and back. Stable as you can be, monitoring that head and neck position. Good, lower the knees, arms can come out a little wider. Top the push up. Let's finish with 10 Spider Man push ups. As you go down, knee to right elbow, knee to left elbow. Right elbow, left elbow. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Come down, sit back. And good job. So a good quick workout. Forgive the lack of good counting at times. Probably did a few more or a few less than I said I did. But I hope you enjoy that. And please leave comments and let us know if you have any questions. Have a good day.